Hello, everyone. Uh, this one goes out to, uh, in particular, the turquoises below boards. Uh, this book is yet another winner. Oh my gosh, anyone who's ever had the thrill of surfing will absolutely love this book, Breath, by Tim Winton. And uh, you know how synchronistic I am. Um, well, this is a real moment uh, that, that the young ones have to attend to, or I hope they'll attend to when I do this reading from page 44 to 49, because I really believe that this is a moment like that for them. Okay, so let me get set up here. Okay, here we go. The surf at the point that day was bigger than either of us expected. And um, this is coming from, there, there's two young kids, they're probably between the ages of 12 and 14, and uh, they've just become uh, hotshot uh, surfers, N not very experienced yet, but the older boys are starting to respect them, and, um, and so they are going out in the bigger waves <clears throat> off, off the point near where they live. The steadily rising swell seemed to match the oily cloud pouring in from the south, comma, and the longer we stayed, comma, the bigger and gloomier it got out there in, on the water, period. We sat in the lineup with a few of the Angelus crew, comma, who let us have a smaller wave now and then, comma, but by afternoon we were paddling much more than surfing, and the pack was moving further and further seaward to meet the hulking sets. Despite the building swell, the older blokes kept up their constant sledging and bantering, comma, but Looney and I were silent, period. My skin seemed to tighten on me. I felt the new mood in the group, comma. Oh, I have to keep stop saying that because I'm, <laughs> I'm not dictating. I'm actually reading. <laughs> okay. So my skin seemed to tighten on me. I felt the new mood in the group, tried to read something in every sideways glance and raised eyebrow. And each time somebody began to casually stroke seaward, I followed for safety's sake and found that I was not alone. We all moved out together. It was as though we became one strange beast, the, like a school of fish moving wordlessly in unison. There was always a moment when a fresh conviction came into our stroke. We put our heads down and paddled for all we were worth, even though more than half of us hadn't yet seen the chains of swell beginning to warp into the bay. Eventually, we'd see the set trundling in, looking for all the world as if the whole rolling column might simply grind past the point toward the misty smudges of the eastern cliffs in the distance. But then the shelling underwater ridge of the headland snagged those waves one by one, swinging them in like gates, hinged upon the land itself until they turned shoreward into our direction. This wasn't Sawyer Point anymore. This was outside. Outside Sawyer Point, as the older guys called it, and it hadn't broken like this for a year. I was galvanized by fear. I had no intention of surfing these waves. They were way out of my range, but neither did I want to be mowed down by them, so I paddled like hell to scrape up and over each in turn before they broke. I felt loony nearby doing more or less the same thing, though a tad more coolly and I remembered making it up the spray-torn crest of an absolute smoker just as some goateed hellman dropped blithely, blithely down its face. In that instant, I turned to see that the tip of the headland was, as I suspected, behind us. We were now beyond the point outside the bay. It was only 500 yards, but it truly felt like we were at sea. Other more experienced riders caught waves around us, they flew past hooting and screaming until in an eerie lull after a long passage of swells. I realized that there were only three of us left out there, Looney and me and a bloke from Angelus called Slipper. Slipper had a matted ginger afro and the bloodshot eyes of a stoner. Two of his front teeth were missing and he wore an old beaver tail dive suit that looked like a dingo had been at it. He sat up beside us and smiled as if he was having the time of his life. I, it must be said, was not nearly as sanguine. Take the next one, kid, he said. Uh, I don't know, I murmured. Can't walk home from here, he said, with a manic leer. 
May as well go for it, eh? How about you, Snowy? You going? No point bobbing around here like a bloody tea bag. All right, said Looney, rising to the bait. I'll go. The rip that poured seaward from the bay had become a veritable river, surging past the rocks of the headland to spew a plume of sand and weed at our backs. We found ourselves forced further and further out by the current. The sea became confused and jumpy. We were in foreign territory now. The coast to the west was a snarl of cliffs and boulders into the murky distance. There was nowhere to land over there. I considered paddling back east across the rip and into the bay to aim for the bar at the river mouth, but that would put me right in the path of the oncoming sets, and I'd be buried in white water. I knew that once I lost my board, I'd be at the mercy of the current, and I didn't like my chances. There was no way around the fact that I was buggered. I was so frightened, I genuinely thought I could shit myself at any moment. Slipper called a heads up as another set began to bear down on us. It was much further seaward of where we were, but it looked ready to break even that far out. In such a depth of water was very was the very idea in such a depth of water, the very idea of this was stupefying. You're not gonna pike on me, are are you? Slipper bellowed over his shoulder. You won't choke now, will you, Snow? Piss off, said Looney with a sick grin. Just remember I'm giving yous a wave. Don't usually hand out freebies to little snot-nosed grommets. But I'm in a good mood, so take it while it's going. The first wave of the set was lumpy and malformed, but Looney turned and went anyway as I knew he would. The soles of his feet looked yellow and small, and his elbows stuck out as he paddled. I sat rearing for a moment as all that water welled up un beneath us, and then he was gone. Slipper hooted, but in a moment, another wedging peak was upon us. Car and kid, no guts, no glory. I don't think so, I said. It's the only way home now. I said nothing. You made'll know you're a snook, a sook, a fucking pussy. But I didn't go. I just barely made it up the face of that wave and free fell out the back so hard I had the wind knocked out of me. Slipper paddled up close and snarled in my ear. I take the next one, sport, and you're out here on your own. Get it? By then I was addled and breathless. Looney's wave was spilling itself in, across the river mouth, across already, but there was no sign of him. The third wave began its slow left turn towards me. It looked as big as the pub, and as it began to break down the break the sound, rattled my ribs with slipper right up behind beside me. I turned my little stubby hawk around and paddled. I paddled, I must add, without vigor, and in a moment the wave was upon me, its mass overtaking me so fast that it felt as though I was traveling backwards. All about was seething vapor. I hung right up in the boiling nest of foam at its very peak, suspended in noise and unbelief, before I began to fall out and down in a welter of blinding spray. I only got to my feet from instinct, but there I suddenly was, upright and alive, skittering in front of all that jawing mess with my little board chattering underfoot. It was hard to credit the speed, the way the wave hauled itself upright in my path as it found shallower water. All I could do was squat and aim and hope. Yet, for all this mad acceleration, there was still something ponderous about the movement of the water. On TV, I'd seen elephants run beside safari jeeps, pounding along at incredible speed while seeming to move in slow motion, and that's exactly how it was. Hectic noise, immense force, driven up through the feet and the knees, all in a kind of stop time. For a fatal moment, now that I was unexpectedly on top of things, the whole enterprise seemed too easy. Within three seconds, I went from... <coughs> saving myself from certain disaster to believing I was a 13-year-old hellman. I never did see the great slab of water that cut me off at the knees. Looney said it came down behind like a landslip and simply flicked me away. I didn't even get time to draw a breath. I was abruptly in darkness, being poliaxed across the sandy bottom of the bay, holding onto the dregs in my lungs while the grit blasted through my hair and my limbs. felt as though they were would be wrenched from their sockets. 
When I burst back to the surface, my board was long gone, and before I could begin the swim in another rumbling pile of foam bore down on me, so I dived and took another belting. It seemed a good while before I finally came up in a spritzing froth in the shadows, sinuses burning, shorts around my thighs, and by then Looney was already up on the beach, grinning like a nutter, with my board stuck tail first into the dry sand beside him. <laughs> so this reading is, uh, once again, uh, really gearing it uh, towards the very vulnerable young ones uh, below the floorboards right now, because this is a moment that they're in. And I think I'm going to read a little bit further um, so that they understand how if you don't make the leap at a certain time, um, you don't get a chance to leap again. So, so reading on up to page 50, Slipper came out on the wave of the day. He wound his way across the bay in, in long, arrogant swipes, flicking out in front of the river mouth and walking all the way back up the beach as non-colon as you like. But as he reached us, he gave a gap-toothed leer, tossing his board onto the flatbed truck and motioned for us to throw ours up on as well. We didn't hesitate. We climbed up because the Angelus crew, basking in their new and grudging respect, oh, we climbed up beside the Angelus crew, <coughs> basking in their new and grudging respect, and as we ground up the track, a monster set closed out the entire bay behind us. I'm going to repeat that. We climbed up beside the Angelus crew, basking in their new and grudging respect, and as we ground up the track, a monster set closed out the entire bay behind us, shooting foam against the dunes and brown storm scum high across the scrub of the headland. It was carnage, and yet the, the swell still appeared to be building. The truck reached the dirt turnaround where our bikes lay, but didn't stop. We veered west and into a set of wheel ruts that traversed the ridge of the headland and across into the heath country, spiky wild scrub dotted with granite boulders and washouts, boards and tools and bodies slammed back and forth across the tray until we pulled up a mile or so further on a basalt, basalt knoll above the sea cliffs. Everyone stood <coughs> and leant on the roof of the cab staring seaward. I didn't know what we were look, all looking at, and then I saw the flickering white bombora in the distance. When the bay shuts down, said Slipper, it starts to crank out there. A mile out, a white smear appeared on the Black Sea. A moment later, the sound of it reached us. It was like a thunderclap. You could feel the vibration in the chassis of the truck. How big is that, I asked. Everybody laughed. Well, I persisted. How big was the point today? Too big for you, sport, said Slipper. Eight foot, maybe, said some, ten right there at the end. So what's that, I persisted, out there? What size? Slipper shrugged. Can't tell, he said. Twenty? Bigger, said the wiry little bloke. Does anybody surf it? Nobody spoke. I'll end it there. Take care, you guys. May the force be with you.